4.41 a.m. here, and uh, this is a look outside just a few minutes ago, looking at the moon here. And it was rather chilly when I was outside, uh, 68.5 where I'm at here in Texas, and a very full moon, uh, the eclipse moon. We had the eclipse just uh, two weeks ago. So anyway, I thought I would share with you a little bit of the uh, new findings on Irma. So let's head to the charts and take a look what's going on. At this hour, we've got uh, Hurricane Irma crossing the island of Barbuda. So it's just now reached the Leeward Islands and starting to make its way over across to St. Martin. And that's where there's that airfield where a lot of aviation enthusiasts uh, gather. And I believe they have a webcam that's operating out of there if you look around for that. So uh, hopefully that all stays online. But uh, that should be over there. Let's see what uh, our movement vectors are. 12Z. That's going to be just a little bit after daybreak uh, before the eye gets there. But uh, it's going to be moving across uh, deeper waters north of the Dominican Republic and then heading up north of Cuba. This is the uh, assembly of the latest high-resolution dynamic models along with the official NHC forecast, which has been, I think, amended a little bit which I'll show you in a minute. You can see there's a very uh, sharp recurvature here. Let me get this centered here. There's a pretty strong recurvature around here about the 96 to 108 hour point. A lot of these uh, models starting to show a northward track here. And this is different from what we had yesterday. Let me see if I can uh, show you the way things were looking back then. Yeah, this was the uh, model grouping. This is uh, looking at the uh, lower resolution ensembles. The top one here, this is the uh, GFS. This was yesterday, and you can see there was strong grouping across uh, northern Cuba. It looked like this might even head out into the western Gulf. Similar situation with the European model, except it had more of them spreading up towards Florida. A little bit more of an uncertain picture. Well, what does this look like tonight? This is what we're seeing tonight, GFS. What I've done here is I've weeded out 50% of the outliers. Okay, so we're seeing uh, the kind of like a median of uh, 10 members here. And you can see that most of them are close to the coast or between just there and Nassau. The uh, European solution, a little bit lower here has got most of them making landfall anywhere between just off Miami and uh, right around Cape Coral. This is also a median 50% here. I've weeded out 25% on either side for a total of 25 members here. So we're showing pretty strong grouping in the European models coming up in the southern Florida. And both of these are kind of dire for the Miami area, except some of these uh, here are taking the uh, storm a lot further off into the Atlantic and more affecting the Bahamas there. Now, as far as the high-resolution model, let's take a quick look at that. Actually, we can look at the satellite. This is the uh, latest satellite. Let me check the time on this. This is every 15 minutes and the latest frame there is uh, 9 UTC which is about 45 minutes ago. And very well defined eye. You can see an annular eye wall structure on that thing. Very definite Cat 4, Cat 5 storm by the look of this. You don't see the fragment, the fragmented look of the eye on the weaker storms. And uh, eye wall, or the eye itself, uh, at least a good 30 miles across there. So that's continuing to move west-northwest. NHC has uh, shown intensification of the storm from what we saw when we did the webcast about nine hours ago. You can see the, let me back that off here, 5 a.m. advisory, 5 a.m. eastern, which was 45 minutes ago, 185 knots. 
sustained, or 185 miles an hour sustained. Big difference there, 160 knots, still a Cat 5. And this is the uh, motion I was talking about. This is the uh, new forecast. Let me see what time this is, 5 a.m. And you can see that they are kind of backing off from that western trajectory and bringing that more up into the Everglades. So the uh, stronger eye wall would come up into the homestead area, assuming that that happened. But again, the storm several hundred miles away, and we're kind of splitting hairs talking about where exactly it's going to come on shore. There's a pretty good spread there. European models got that clustered a lot closer together. The uh, GFS has most of it offshore with a few members onshore there. So it could very well go up the straight here, which uh, would probably be the optimal solution here, or the optimal outcome, I should say. Uh, let's see, what else is there to say? Uh, that's pretty much about it. Just kind of passing on the dynamic models. Um, just showing you that uh, we're seeing more of a initiation of recurvature up into Florida rather than the gradual westward trend there. And let's see, we got a few people joining. A few insomniacs up. Love the random live stream. Yeah, Houston and Miami could both be ravaged this year from David. Houston already got it, obviously. What's going to happen to Puerto Rico? Looks like the storm is going to go north of there. It is a Cat 5 storm, and uh, the eye wall could still graze Puerto Rico. But uh, let's take a look, since we do have a few viewers there. And you can see most of the dynamic tracks uh, going north of there. The uh, ones coming closer to the island would be the NHC official forecast there, the uh, UK model, UK Met, European model, and the CMC. And then our northerly tracks are going to be the GFS and uh, the NAVGEM, the HMON, which is the replacement for the GFDL and the HWRF. And that's kind of a summary of the tracks right there. Let me see if that's showing there. Uh, the the HMON, uh, or I, I don't know too much about this model or how accurate it is. Um, I know, you know, it is supposed to be the follow-on there to the GFDL. And I believe it has uh, some very strong sea and atmospheric interactions there, but it's going there with kind of uh, what we've got for the official NHC track bringing into the Everglades. And I don't know, this is uh, the seasterly track. This is probably causing a lot of heartburn there for NHC. They're trying to figure out likely what to do with that solution there. So very difficult uh, situation for them. So we'll just uh, kind of wait and see what the runs show tomorrow. See if there's any westward movement of in the trends once we get the new data coming in. And uh, that's about all I got for tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and head back in program. And hopefully that helps out some of you. And we will talk to you more. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.